What makes an object look realistic in 3D? It's those small tiny blemishes, scratches, imperfections from wear, tear and dirt. If you have this with good lighting, you'll get a realistic image. So, how can we achieve it? Would we model then create textures by mixing a lot of different photos? Could be, but there's a better way. So we can use a device that will save us a lot of money and time in the long run. We can capture people, faces, rocks, decor pieces, miniatures, and even complex tools. So you don't have to model these objects yourself. And anyway, you could never get such a level of realism when you model it yourself. Let's start scanning something fun. This astronaut figurine sitting on the moon. It has a lot of texture and small details, making it perfect to showcase the detail the scanner can capture. By the way, I want to thank you, Creality, for sending me this scan raptor so I can show you how it works in this video. The scan raptor, it's the world's first consumer grade scanner with metrology level accuracy, and it has both near infrared and blue laser modes. This means you can scan a wide range of objects with precision, with an accuracy of up to 0.02 mm in blue laser mode and scanning up to 50 frames per second. It's perfect for capturing fine details in everyday items. It easily scans small to large objects and can scan black objects without assistance. I'm using a turntable, which is a plate tray from IKEA. You can easily get one of these yourself from your local store. Then I placed a lot of these reflector markers on the surface. I will use the blue laser mode and these markers assist the scanner in aligning the model during the process. And since I'm using reflector markers on the surface, I can't scan the astronaut in its standing position. Instead, I'll lay it down and scan one side first. Now we can start the scan. The software will capture different angles, so you'll want to ensure the object is well lit, but without any harsh shadows. I'm rotating the object to capture all the details until the majority of the object turns green in the software. And when the scan is complete, I press this button to finish. The software automatically processes the point cloud. A point cloud is a collection of tiny dots that map the surface of an object in 3D. From here, I can fine tune the model by removing any unwanted parts. Then I'll hover over the point cloud optimization and I select Auto. Usually it works fine. Now I need to scan the other part. So I just rotate the object and click this button to start a new scanning process. When it's done, I usually merge both scans by doing a point cloud merging. Usually the automatic option works fine, so let's go with that. Now all it's left to do is go to Mesh Settings and I leave at 2 million polygons and select Hole Filling to close any areas that the scanner may have not captured. Let's take a quick look at the scan model. You can see how detailed it is, and all the fine details are captured throughout the miniature. And this just took a couple of minutes to scan. Imagine the time it takes to model a complex object like this. One last thing we can do is generate a color map. Clicking this color mapping icon will generate a color texture. You can see how it looks. I'll now export it as OBJ and load it in 3ds Max. You can see the geometry looks fairly clean, but with a very high density of polygons. So I'll use the retopology modifier on 3ds Max to get it down to 20,000 polygons. And this is how it looks. It did a great job retaining the shapes of the object. Now I'll load it into one of my projects inside Lumion, adjust the materials, and here's how it looks after rendered. Pretty cool, right? Let me know in the comments what you think of the results so far. Organic forms are complex to model due to their irregularities. They often have tiny blemishes, dots and imperfections that you would barely notice with the naked eye. I'll start with this pomegranate. Once again, I'll use the blue laser for this scan and as soon as the majority of the model turns green, it's good to go. I'm scanning three parts to better capture all the details and later merge them in the software. Here's the result so far. You can see these small bumps that I didn't even notice before. If I were modeling this by hand, I probably wouldn't include these details. 
That's exactly why scanning organic assets like this is crucial for achieving realistic renders. And here's how it looks rendered in Lumion. You can see how well it captures the details. Now let's move on to scanning something else, my face. For this, I'll switch to infrared mode in the software, which is ideal for scanning faces because it doesn't require reflective markers and is great for capturing softer features. In the software, I'll select the face scan option to optimize the settings for detailed facial features. Scanning my face is simple, and I can easily do it myself by just moving the scanner around my face with my hand. But one limitation of this scanning myself is that I cannot capture the hair or the back of my head very well. For a more complete scan, including the back and hair, a more controlled setup would be necessary. And here's my face. You can see all the details it managed to capture. You can clearly see the level of detail it captured from the contours of my face to the fine textures. Next, I have scanned the rock. These rocks are commonly used in environmental or outdoor architectural renderings. You can tell how well the scanner can capture detailed textures and uneven surfaces. Next, I scanned something much smaller, a coin. The blue laser mode is ideal for capturing extremely fine details, like the textures and engravings on the coin surface. The process is the same as before, just capture all the details from both sides with two scans. And this is how it looks. <laughs> Quite amazing, right? We can see all the details on the coin. Now it's time for something more complex, this power drill. You can see the level of detail it will require to capture something like this. And this object took me about 5 minutes to scan, but you can see the level of detail that it captures. Looking at the final result, you can see the blue laser managed to capture a very good amount of detail. There are just some areas in the front that probably I will need to place some extra reflector markers, but other than that, it's a pretty good result. While the Creality Scan Raptor is great, there are a few things to keep in mind. It's not super portable, since it's tethered by a cable, so you are limited in how far you can go. But Creality will launch a wireless kit later, so let's see how it will go. Another thing I noticed is that even though the color texture it generates is in 4K, oftentimes the UV islands don't use the full 4K space, so in the end we get a lower resolution texture. Also, scanning complex objects often requires multiple passes and adjustments, oftentimes asking you to go back to the position you were in before and start from there. And lastly, there's a bit of a learning curve to get everything just right, but after a couple of scans, you start to get the hang of it. So, in conclusion, the Creality CR Scan Raptor offers solid performance for capturing detailed 3D models. It does have a few limitations, but with practice, it delivers excellent results. And while it's not the cheapest option on the market, with features like the Blue Laser tool, makes it the best you can find at this price point. And let me know if you'd like me to make more videos exploring the scanner capabilities. And as always, don't forget to give the video a like, and I'll see you in the next one.